Number 1. Why loneliness triggers your brain's survival mode. You might think being alone just makes you a little sad, maybe bored. But to your brain, loneliness is far more serious. It's not a quiet emotional state. It's a biological alarm. Throughout human history, being isolated from the group usually meant one thing, danger. You were more likely to starve, get attacked, or simply not survive. So, the brain evolved to see social isolation as a real threat. And when it senses that threat, it activates your survival systems. One of the first regions to light up is the amygdala, your brain's emotional smoke detector. It becomes hypersensitive. Every glance, every silence, every little rejection feels bigger. You start to perceive neutral situations as negative. A friend not texting back feels personal. A stranger not smiling feels hostile. And it doesn't stop there. Loneliness also activates the hypothalamus, which turns on your fight-or-flight response. Your body pumps out more cortisol, the stress hormone. Your heart beats faster. Your muscles tense up as if you're preparing for a threat that never comes. In short, your brain thinks loneliness is a life-or-death emergency. It wants you to reconnect. But ironically, the same changes that are meant to protect you often make you withdraw even more. And this is just the beginning. Number 2. The Chemical Fallout – Cortisol and Dopamine Imbalance Loneliness doesn't just feel bad, it biochemically damages you. When your brain enters survival mode due to social isolation, it starts flooding your system with cortisol, the stress hormone. At first, cortisol is helpful. It gives you energy and alertness. But when it's constantly elevated, it starts to wreck everything. Your immune system, weakened. Your blood pressure, raised. Your ability to focus or feel motivated, diminished. And while cortisol rises, something else falls. Dopamine the neurotransmitter that makes you feel pleasure, reward, and connection. In lonely people, dopamine circuits become underactive. Things that used to feel enjoyable, music, food, hobbies, start to feel dull or pointless. You begin to withdraw more. Not because you want to, but because your brain isn't offering the chemical rewards that usually come with interaction. It's a vicious cycle. The lonelier you feel, the harder it becomes to escape that loneliness. Over time, this imbalance also affects your sleep patterns, memory, and even decision-making. Some researchers call chronic loneliness a slow-motion stress response, one that leaves your body in a constant state of subtle emergency. And the scariest part? You might not even notice it's happening until you've already changed. Number three. Loneliness literally shrinks parts of your brain. Yeah, you heard that right. Chronic loneliness can physically change the structure of your brain, and not in a good way. One of the first areas affected is the hippocampus, the region responsible for memory, emotional regulation, and learning. In long-term loneliness, this part of the brain actually shrinks. Brain scans show reduced volume and connectivity in people who've been socially isolated for extended periods. It's the same kind of deterioration we see in depression and even early Alzheimer's. But it doesn't stop there. The prefrontal cortex, which helps you plan, make decisions, and regulate your emotions, also takes a hit. Loneliness weakens this area's activity, making it harder for you to think clearly or control negative thoughts. That's why lonely people often feel mentally foggy or emotionally unstable. It's not just in their head metaphorically, it's in their head. Literally. Even your brain's default mode network, the system that activates when you're not focused on a task, like when you're daydreaming or reflecting, starts behaving differently. It becomes more self critical, more ruminative, and less optimistic. You get stuck inside your own head, replaying your mistakes, overthinking conversations, and assuming the worst. So, yes, loneliness doesn't just feel heavy, it rewires your brain, weakens critical regions and makes it harder to escape the very trap you're stuck in. Number 4. Why nothing feels rewarding anymore. When you're lonely for too long, even things you used to love start to feel empty. That's not laziness. That's your reward system breaking down. Normally, your brain releases dopamine when you do something enjoyable. Talk to a friend, listen to music, eat your favorite food. 
but loneliness rewires that whole system. Your brain starts releasing less dopamine, and it becomes less responsive to it. This is called reward system desensitization. So even when you try to engage, go for a walk, call someone, cook something, you feel nothing. No joy, no energy, just numbness. And the more this happens, the more likely you are to retreat back into isolation. It's a cruel paradox. Your brain needs connection to feel pleasure, but the lack of pleasure makes you avoid connection. This is the loneliness loop, and it mimics the same patterns seen in addiction and depression. Even your ventral striatum, a core part of your brain's reward center, becomes less active. This means your motivation drops, your curiosity fades, and your desire to explore the world shrinks. That's why lonely people often say things like, I don't feel like myself anymore, because in many ways, they aren't. Their brain isn't reacting to the world the same way it used to. But here's the twist, that change isn't permanent. Number five, your brain can heal, and it wants to. Here's the part people rarely talk about. Your brain wasn't designed to stay broken. It was built to recover, to reconnect, rewire, and rebuild, even after years of loneliness. Neuroscience has a name for this, neuroplasticity. It means your brain is always capable of change. When you start reconnecting with people, even in small, low-pressure ways, your brain begins to reverse the damage. The hippocampus can regrow. The dopamine system can reawaken. The amygdala can calm down. It doesn't happen overnight, but it happens. And no, this doesn't mean you need a hundred friends or constant social activity. Just meaningful moments, a walk with someone you trust, a real conversation instead of small talk. Even moments of shared silence can re-engage your social brain. Practices like mindfulness, journaling, and even therapy can help your brain relearn safety. Over time, your sleep improves, your energy returns, and the world starts to feel less threatening and more alive. The key is to take the first small step, not because you're broken, but because your brain is trying to heal. It just needs a signal from you that it's safe to come back. So if you've been feeling numb, anxious, or detached, it doesn't mean you're lost. It means your brain has been waiting. And now, it's time to return. So let's wrap this up. Your brain isn't broken. It's just responding to a world it doesn't feel safe in. Loneliness made it hyper alert, chemically drained, and emotionally numb. But that's not the end of the story. Because even now, right now, it's listening. Waiting for something simple. Connection. It doesn't need to be loud or dramatic. Just real. Say hi to someone, sit in sunlight, write down a thought, take one step out. That's how it begins. That's how your brain remembers who you really are, and it will thank you, quietly but powerfully.